It's always exciting in um, spring where we see the first bees emerging from hibernation. Um, Monty and I have been enjoying following the queen bumblebees as they start looking for nesting sites. As they scurry along the ground looking for holes in old derelict mouse holes and little holes in the rocks in the earth and under piles of wood as well. So those undisturbed areas of the garden are really important. And we've just seen our first tree bee today, which has a white tail, but it's got this buff-coloured sort of orangey thorax near the head, and then a black abdomen, a black body. And that was quite exciting, seeing the first one enjoying the dandelions which, and the celandine, which are two of their favourite flowers. We've also seen the early bee, which is one of the first to emerge, and a red tails. They're all black except for a red tail. The queen, the male bee, also has a little bit of yellow on his head, this little fuzzy hat. And the white tail as well, with a white tail like the tree bee, but two bands of yellow. And there's actually 24 different types of bumblebee in Britain. There were 26, but sadly two have become extinct. Um, the apple bee being one of them. And there's 225 different types of solitary bees, so there's plenty of inspiration. It's amazing to think that all of these bees, uh, this whole book, is different bees that are found in Britain and in Ireland. And it's a, a really useful ID book. And so today I thought it'd be great to do some pictures inspired by bees, and we're going to do two different methods. So to start with, I'm just drawing out my red-tailed bumblebee. And I'm drawing the, we've got the head, see at the top of the body, with their large eyes, which contain many lenses. Well, as we just have one lens in our eyes, they've got lots and lots of little lenses helping them to, to see. And of course the antennae, which help them to sense and feel their surroundings and respond to their surroundings. So we can put in their, their long antennae. And then you have the thorax, which is like the action part of the body. So this is where the wings, um, those lovely large wings, attach onto. And this is where everything connected with their movement and their flight is attached. So the legs as well also attach onto the thorax. And the legs have lots of different segments. The worker bees and the queen bees have these sort of pollen sacs, which are these hairy, they have long hairs coming off them, and they help to collect and sort of keep the, the pollen as they take them back to their nest. So we can draw in the, the segments of the, the bee's legs and they really are fascinating creatures and very important creatures as they pollinate so many wildflowers and so many of our food crops as well like strawberries, tomatoes, raspberries, runner beans, apples, they're really essential creatures. And very gentle, bumblebees you know in particular they won't, they're only attack someone if they feel they're, they'll only sting someone if they feel they're very threatened. They're, they're very peaceful creatures and um, it's only I think the female worker bees that actually have a, a sting as well as a way of protecting and defending their nests. So I've just drawn out my, my bee onto the, the paper. Drawing in the abdomen here which is where all their organs are. So all their, their organs are in the abdomen. I'm just going to mark out the abdomen as well is made up of segments. But the end segment of the red tail is this wonderful sort of glowing red orange colour. It's got a lovely rich glow. So I'm looking forward to painting that. But we'll start with the wings. And I'm just using the three primary colours for my painting. So we're using our blue. And just any paint. I can, these are um, nice eco um, Ocanorm paints. They're just sort of water-based, kind of like a poster paint. You can use watercolour paint 
or acrylic or any any yeah poster paint you've got and of course lots of yellow and then red for the tail and with these three primary colors we'll be able to mix all the colors we need for our painting you can just then mix in the red so i'm going to start with the wings and the wings of these are fairly transparent but you often get colours seen within them so I'm just going to do a wash of water to start with just all over the wings and they have lots of little sort of fine veins that help the structure of the wings and often because they're transparent you just get sort of light reflecting in them and colours from say the garden around you know, trees, foliage, the sky. So I'm just going to go in with some blue to give that sense of them reflecting the, the sky and maybe a little bit of yellow which when the yellows mix with that blue it will give me the green of the garden, the greenery and foliage. And then of course we've got the wings over the body as well so I could mix a little bit of the three primary colours together blue, red and yellow and that will give me a dark blackish brown so if you mix the three primary colours together you get so basically black and I'm just going to dab that on because that will show where the you see the body of the bee underneath um, through the wings so I'm starting light, it's always best to start with a lighter colour and then gradually get darker because it's easier to make it darker than try and lift off and lighten your colours. You'll notice we're not using a white. So I'm just putting in some, some darker colours and a little bit of that yellow here and there. So if you're looking at bees it might be any of the colours you see from the flowers they're feeding on that you can see through their transparent wings. So we're just dabbing on these colours and then what I'm going to do to create that because they look almost slightly like a film, like it's almost like a tissue paper, that sort of crinkled sense of the surface of the wings with the veins. So we've got a way of kind of recycling and having some fun with our materials. I'm going to crinkle up some plastic film, plastic wrapping. We always try and minimise the amount of plastic we have and, and buy, but it's hard to avoid completely. So this is a way of at least trying to reuse it. Um, so any plastic packaging and um, cling film as well works. You can just scrunch it up. So scrunch it up as much as you can, because you really want lots of creases and crinkles in the, the plastic and whilst your paint's wet so we're just going to just adding in if I add more blue and red and just a small amount of yellow I'll get a so sort of dark purpley black I can dab that on because you want some contrast for this technique to work you want some quite dark shadows and once I've scrunched up my tissue paper and got it all nice and scrunched I can then lay that, sorry my tissue, my plastic, I've got that all scrunched up. I can lay that over the top of the wings. And I can even deliberately sort of pleat it and create some folds in the plastic. And then if I lay that over the top, it should hopefully give me that really nice text of the bee's wings with all those little creases for the veins in the wings and all those folds so what you want to do is just lay that down on your paper and probably put a, a book on top of it and just wait until your paint's dry so probably about 20 minutes or so just to let the, the paint dry don't be tempted to peel it off you can have a tiny peek in one corner but if it still looks like the paint's wet leave all well alone because otherwise 
um, you'll find that the paint just runs back and you, you lose the effect that you've got because it, the paint just runs over the, the patterns that were created. So wait until it's completely dry and then you can get on with the, the next part of painting the, the bee's body.